What's going on guys, Plastic Beach X3 back here with another One Piece Sim video and this time it's going to be another ranked ladder video utilizing the Bonnie strategy. Uh, once again, playing the same Bonnie deck that I have been playing for the last few videos. I appreciate everyone who watches these and leaves comments asking about the deck. By far my favorite deck in the meta. I love the toolbox aspect of the strategy and I just love green and um yeah it's a sick ass deck and i think it's underrated currently so i'd appreciate everyone in the comments uh being so nice and helping me through the plays as well as learning from my mistakes and learning from my success so appreciate it let's get into some games uh the first one is going to be against uh, red purple law you know one of the best decks in the game <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna go second. Yeah, I chose to go second. Um, I'm gonna keep the hand because it has Hody in the matchup. You generally want to um, mulligan for Hody. You notice that fat whiff off the bunny. Gross. Uh, opponent is gonna swing into the bunny past turn. I will just play an Urog and stand to Dawn. Could have argued for the double searcher. Um, he's going to swing five, and I'll take the first one. Maybe it's bad too, though. Not only for, like, Hody reasons, but also um, for blocker law reasons. Yeah, I'm not set on that. I actually swing a life here, and generally I'm trying to starve the matchup. But since they didn't have the Zoro on the field, I'm also, you know, testing different strategies all the time um you know i just don't want to take some other person's word for it like obviously i read it i read online and i read from good players in the asian meta that starving rp law with bonnie is going to be the strat but like i'd rather test it for myself than listen to anyone else like am i definitely going to take those words with yeah like I'm, I'm gonna start with that strategy for sure um and it's not a bad strategy at all I just want to try new things sometimes. Um, I actually don't swing with leader here because he did give me a card. Funny enough, so ended up not swinging with leader anyway. But um, I swung with the Urog just because one, it's going to get removed. One sec. Swung with the Urog just because um, one, it's going to get removed, and one, it's going to get removed, and um, like I get its ability whether it's tapped or not. And he didn't have Zoro Zero on the field, like he didn't Don minus three to play the Zoro as well. So um, I felt like it's like relatively safe to put some pressure on life. Uh, but actually, instead of doing that, he discards a card. Um, so I just pivot to not letting him have a life anymore. Uh, so because he like, I, I mean, I feel like they just take that every single time. Uh, they take the first hit every single time, no matter what. Um, but this guy didn't, so I was going to super punish him for doing that by not giving him a card to replace the one he discarded in the deck that, like, cards in hand is everything. Uh, then I'm going to play this Cavendish here. Um, after I swing, play a Bonnie. I don't know what... Oh, I got a... Yeah, I got a Basil, I guess. Um, and then just pass turn. Uh, could have swung six and still got the Dawn with the Urog, but once again, he discarded a card, so I felt like it was more safe to not give him a life and punish him for losing a card in hand for no reason. They're actually going to swing eight here, and we'll just start playing from here. I'm going to tap the leader and take the life. They're going to play a kid, Dawn minus three, to bottom the Bonnie. Play a Bonclay, which is a terrifying card in the matchup, if not for Hody Jones. I'm going to play Hody Jones, tap the Bonclay, tap the Kid, swing six into the Bonclay, get two Dawn back, swing five into the Eye, and he lets it go. So I'm just going to swing six into the Kid, he lets that go as well. I'm going to swing eight life, and then play the Bonnie. Now that I have a board presence, it's probably pretty safe to start swinging at life. He's not going to be able to remove all of my characters it's not like sakazuki the leader can only remove one thing if they're not <clears throat> excuse me if they're not uh killing it by battle so 
you know, hopefully start getting towards the end of the game uh, by pressuring life. He's going to go minus three with a Gordon on the Cavendish bottom three. Or minus three to bottom deck the Cavendish, play a Shashi Penguin, and then hard play a Shiraya. Super annoying. I don't have a Hody, so that sucks. But I do have, I just top decked a kid, so I'll probably just play the kid. Swing five, swing eight. I guess he was in he was in uh, fear of the 10 drop Dofi, and it's also like the kid, his blocker kid getting answered, so he didn't take a free block there. I can't play anything off the kid, but it's fine. Once again, could have swung six with my leader, but I feel like it's like, yes, it more than likely was just me forgetting about Urug, but <laughs> looking back on it, like it doesn't really matter. Um, if he took the free block, I just swing into the kid and kill the kid. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, he's going to minus three to my kid. Will swing into seven into the kid. I will just uh, tap the Shiraya and counter. You know, tapping the Shiraya so I can set up kill next turn. He takes a while to think about this one, but... Um, You can go like pretty big into the kid. You know, obviously the issue there is if he does, um, I can just block with the Urug. And if he tries to go anything under 10, I have the counter for it. Uh, he does have the second raise. Max chooses not to use it on the kid. I think that was probably his first mistake. Um, and then bottom decks the, maybe not first mistake, but um, I don't know about that. I feel like he just bottom decked the kid, but um, bottoms the Urog so that he can swing. Oh, I guess he thought he could kill the kid as well, um, which he very well can if he puts a bunch of Dawn on his leader, but he doesn't because he has to play this kid blocker to try and live, and it's just futile. Um, so maybe opponent played that a little weird at the end. I feel like there was a much better line. I mean, it makes sense to... Like, now that I'm thinking about it, to kill the Urog so that you can hopefully kill the kid as well. What was their hand? Shachi, so. Yeah, not much they could have done anyway. I feel like they could have got rid of the kid, but I would have had the Urog. Hody, they have no kid blocker. So. Um, anyway, that's enough of that game. Let's go into the next game against another Red Purple Law. <clears throat> I believe it's the same opponent as last last game. Uh, queued up pretty quick into them. Uh, gonna go second once again. Gonna play this baby five. Search a baby five two k. Kept the hand. You know, as weird as it looks, three d double or triple two k in a searcher. Kept the hand because um, pause. Too many things to talk about. Um, kept the hand because of Hody is just a you know you mulligan for Hody in the matchup. So if you have Hody, you just probably keep it in my opinion, uh, because Hody is just way too good into the deck, like it's pure win condition. Um, so, uh, I do get another baby five here. I'm going to search probably and like definitely arguable to take the 2k over the 10 drop. Cause like maybe in this matchup, I'm never going to be able to play two 10 drop, but I had so many 2ks in hand and also I could have grabbed the searcher searched again, but like you're not going to get much better hits than this in the matchup. Like, if I'm playing against Luchi, I could maybe get the baby five, try to find a Corazon, because Corazon's really good in that matchup. But, like, what else are you searching with baby fives besides Dofi, 2K, Corazon? Nothing. So, uh, no point to get the baby five, I feel like. So, I actually do grab the 10 drop. I unbelievably, it sucks. <laughs> but opponent does play into the one drop uh, uh, Scratch Minapu, and I don't have it. I have every other 2k in the deck besides the Scratchman of Pooh to punish the playing the Gordon, uh, but simply don't have it. And I have the Dawn to spare. <laughs> and I'm not even going to swing this turn. So, uh, damn. But, or like a Joy or Bonnie to search the Scratchman or something. That would have been crazy. Because um, obviously the Scratchman could have tapped down the Gordon and swung into it. But either way, uh, going to grab this Dofi. And decide not to swing at life. I uh, don't want to give him cards too early right now. Even though Zoro's not on the field, it's I still feel like it's... You know, I don't want to give him cards right now. You know, maybe I... maybe I. My question is, like, the starve... You definitely want to starve them. 
sometimes, but you really need to know when to starve them and actually swing at them, depending on your hand, depending on the tempo of the game, the board state, etc., etc. And it just felt like to me in this board state, I'm not really feeling threatened. I don't really want to give them threats to make me feel threatened. I just want to make them have the threats in hand. Um, so that was kind of my thinking there of not swinging. I'm going to play the Cavendish here, get two down back. Don't really have a better play anyway. I just swing into the Gordon. Not only denies them a card from life, but, you know, Gordon is good. Uh, they're going to put two down on their leaders, or on their Nico Robbins, swing seven. I'm going to tap the leader, take the life, and I get a Rosinante. They do have a raise max. When don't they? Um, they're going to bottom deck the Cavendish, play the kid. Uh, sorry, play kid, and then bottom, uh, bottom deck the Cavendish, play raise you. They're going to get a Dom back, and then draw two cards. I am going to play the Hody Jones. Swing five into the raise you, swing eight into the kid. They're actually going to counter out of every swing this turn. Um, but that's fine. Still have a Dawn up, still have a fuck ton of counter. Uh, they're going to spin the 2k to minus two to the Hody, making him a 6k. Once again, a questionable play. Um, I have seen a lot of lot players actually doing this recently where they just try to kill the Hody every time you play it. Like if you play Hody, they're just trying to kill the Hody. Um, it's an interesting strategy. I'm not sure how I, how I feel about it, but, um, Either way, they're going to bottom deck to play the, uh, or, you know, just down minus three to play the uh, Bond Clay. I'm going to have to Hody again. Um, unfortunately, I'd have a ton of 10 drop value, but I really cannot let that. I can't play a 10 drop whenever the fucking Bond Clay is standing on the field. Like, that's silly when I have the ability to Hody. Uh, so I just Hody. Um, I'm going to be able to kill two characters, including the Bond Clay, which is super scary. Um, and then can swing into something else, the kid blocker, so that they only have essentially two swings this turn to my two life, unless they have a kid killer in hand, of course, and I probably have the counter to get out of it. Feeling pretty safe. Um, thinking about next turn, depends if they can answer, they can bottom this hoodie or not, or if I have to spend a bunch of cards, but I could, you know, depending on the board state, play 10 drop, could also play 8 drop, 8 drop would be pretty good. They've spent a bunch of reducers on these hoodies. An opponent's going to mega misplay. Yeah, and concede. They're going to mega misplay. They totally forgot about leader effect. Uh, they're going to swing 8 into my 6k Hody. And then, you know, after they've already piled 5 down on the leader, I'm um, assuming they would have minus 3 and played the blocker here. So, just thinking about, like, if they don't do that, if they swing correctly, like, they leave 4 down up. They leave 3 down up. Swing with the kid here. I tap the Nico Robin. They can swing eight, I guess. Unless they're trying to, unless their intention was to like play their hand, I'm not sure. Like leave three Don up. You don't spin it on the Robin swing. Instead, you can play the Sanji for three uh, because you have two less Don than me, I believe. Nine. No, actually, they don't. Never mind. Uh, they would have to minus three first, play the Ein, and then use the uh, open three to play the Sanji, but even then you're like getting every single card out of your hand. I'm just not sure what the game plan was here. Uh, the, even if they kill the Hody and they can swing double seven into life. No, they would have to swing eight into life. I take the life. I just play kid. They have no reducers. They're at four. They have three cards in hand. They're going to top deck a Raiju. Maybe top deck something crazy. We'll have the Raiju pot of greed into something, but yeah, I just think it was uh, even if not for that misplay, like if, if that misplay didn't happen, I feel like it was cooked um going into the last game of this video i'm gonna be playing against a strategy i haven't played against before on the ranked ladder um and congrats to michael jordan himself um because he's gotten pretty far high on the rank ladder with this strategy um but going unfortunately any win attacking leader <laughs> probably doesn't have a very good matchup into bonnie um, you'll see why in a second. Uh, gonna play the, my own Bonnie, swing seven. There's nothing to tap, so no reason to uh, keep a Don open and against a good player like Michael Jordan himself um, because they are not gonna play into the Bonnie effect. They are gonna go Jimbe into Weevil, which is, I believe, the best thing they can do on four. That seems pretty good, draw a card. Uh, my five Don turn is pitiful. 
I just have to swing seven, play a Corazon, leave a Dawn standing. They're going to go six at life. I will tap the leader so uh, they cannot utilize its ability to restand anything. And you're going to see that as a constant throughout the entire game. Um, Sanji's Aura, the effect is like you can Dawn X1 when attacking, stand a uh, rested 7,000 or, 7, or higher. Or something like that <clears throat> but if they can't attack the, and since they always have to attack bef after they swing with a character to get the ability um, their leader is just gonna be a vanilla in this matchup so they will actually be able to fill up the board with 5k so that's pretty scary I just have to play a hawk and swing 5k into one of them I'm gonna tap the leader just to you know ensure that it doesn't do any restain shenanigans And I will counter out of that. I'm not going to take a 5 sing in the face of two fives and a 2 sixes. They will swing 6, use their Weevil's effect to stack the top 3. I'm going to 2k counter out of that. I expect to take some of these this turn, so I'm just going to take this one. Uh, you know, might as well play around pudding. Uh, they're going to go 8 into life. Uh, I decide whether to block. So here's the mindset. Here's the thought process behind this. Um, I'm going to 9 Dawn. And at this point, they have only 6,000 or less characters. Um, so I'm getting probably too low to be able to play this Hody. And uh, even if I wouldn't want to play the Hody anyway, because like maximum I can kill three characters, they're going to have three uh, swings coming my way, two swings coming my way if I include leader effect. And I'm going to be going down to uh, one life if I block here, play the Hody. And I won't have a blocker standing because I'll have to swing with the Hawkins to try and clear the board. So instead, I'm going to play the kid on nine. Won't be able to use the leader effect, which sucks. So they're going to be able to use their leader ability to restand something if they want to. But I will have three blockers. Um, actually, I think only two blockers because I decided to swing with the Hawkins at life to go for game next turn instead of setting up that two turn kill. Uh, you'll see that. But that's that's kind of my thought process here. So I decide to not counter out of this. Or block it, I mean. And instead take it because I'm probably just going to play the kid. And, you know, general kid ideas is more cards in hand is better. Uh, you can, like, maybe keep a life to try and play around Red Rock. But there's... I don't think there's any playing around Red Rock in this position. I'm not even sure if that deck plays it. So until he shows it to me, like, I'm not going to play around it right now. Uh, it would just be way to my detriment. Ends up not having anything like that. So he's going to swing 8 into the kid. And this is why Kid is so crazy against strategies that just try to spam 5Ks. I'm going to have to go 8 into the Kid. I'll just 1K. 8 into the Kid. Stack the top 3. 2K. 8 at Kid. 2K. And this is where the Sim bugs out. So, <laughs> unfortunately... Gonna run into the same sim bug issue that my opponent in the uh, green yellow Yamato matchup did where you just simply counter out normally like every other time and it just won't let you do anything after, won't let your opponent do anything after and you're just stuck to decide the winner for yourself um, without seeing the cards. Um, obviously he has no dawn left. He's going to pass his turn. He can't swing fives into eights. There's nothing like that. <laughs> so he literally has nothing else to do, which is why I'm like, hey, you you going to play or what in the chat? Um, and whenever he passes turn, I simply, you know, math him out of the game. Probably go nine first just to see what we're at. He might give me, if he gives me three cards, you know, I can math him out from there. I can go, um, so three cards, he'd be at four probably go uh sorry it's hard for me to think about it without seeing the dawn uh nine plus seven plus eight yeah whatever i don't even know what the swings would be but they would be pretty good pretty good high likelihood we'll actually be able to see his hand in a minute to even see if it matters but uh yeah they're gonna I almost type I have game next turn, but I just feel like 
Yeah, so, and, um, yeah, they say I don't care. You probably win anyway. Yeah. Wait. Sorry. GG. Um, but yeah, so they have four dead cards, two 2Ks and a 1K. So if I swing nine, they can get out of it, and then they can't get out of anything else. They're going to be able to draw a card, draw into a 2K, but yeah, it just doesn't matter. Um, so those were those games. Uh, let me go back to the list one last time to show it off before the video ends. Um, once again, appreciate everyone watching. Make sure to learn, leave a comment about you know whatever you want i guess criticize me if you want i don't care um and we can hash it out no i'm just kidding uh i appreciate you guys and um make sure to subscribe to plastic beach x3 for more one one piece videos and peace out